Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here, humbly we bless this ground. Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here, humbly we bless this ground. We learned this last week and we'll gather with this song through this fall semester as we honor this land this place that we find ourselves each Wednesday. Breathe and sing with me. Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here. Humbly we bless this ground. Humbly, humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here. Humbly we bless this ground one more time. Thousands of years, First Nations people have walked this continent with relationship that they treasure with their land at the center of their lives. We who are gathering in this hybrid space, including those connected to classrooms, offices, and the chapel, we do so on territory shared by Illini, Osage, Quapaw, Sioux, Tamaroa and other tribes. And if you're online, I would invite you to add the names of those peoples or those tribes, the land you're on in the chat as we acknowledge them. We acknowledge their stewardship of this land, even as we gather. Friends, may we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with the people. If that's your intention as we gather today, would you add your amen? Amen. We gather in song and in spirit today around the words of Psalm 133. And we're going to begin by singing together. I don't know where our Zoom tech is. Someone is supposed to add the words in the chat this morning. So I'm going to hope that that person will arrive soon to the meeting so that folk online can be welcomed into the space that we're making together, but all of us can sing. The words will be on the screen. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. Listen again. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. Will you try that with me? Miren que bueno. Que bueno es, and we can sing in English. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. If you are ready, would you stand and join in singing? <laughs> Y 
Mire. some harmony. How good it is indeed, friends. Stay standing, and Angela is going to offer our opening prayer. We can have you and me, Angela. That would be awesome. Thank you. That would be awesome. <laughs> God, especially at such a long season of our life, as we gather on a trip from Massachusetts to and Missouri, from Texas and Wisconsin, uh, in person and online, seated at our desk, at the kitchen table, and in the chapel. May we find refreshment and renewal in your presence in each other. Bless us with inspiration and energy and creativity and courage and to cultivate the community, a family of faith where all are seen, heard, acknowledged, and cherished. And where joy overflows when we are together. Amen. Amen. Be seated, friends. Thank you. Psalm 133, as you know, and as Dr. McCann would tell you, is a runner up for the shortest psalm in the book. It is uh, only outmatched by Psalm 117, which is a two verse psalm. But in three verses, the psalmist does not skimp in offering us extravagant images for what it is to be together. We haven't been together for a while, at least not in person. And I wonder, as you read this psalm, what images, phrases, words connect, what may be confused or confound. But I wonder, since we are together as a 
virtual and in-person community if we might those of you online stay on mute if you don't mind for the moment but let's listen and speak the psalm together in unison friends will you join me look at how good and pleasing it is when families live together as one it is like expensive oil poured over the head running down onto the beard aaron's beard which extended over the collar of his robes it is like the dew on mount hermon streaming down onto the mountains of zion because it is there that the lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. Friends, holy wisdom, holy word, and we respond, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Any words or phrases that just popped out to you in the reading uh, together of the psalm? We're going to spend a little more time with it, but what did you hear? Anything? Anything surprising, delight, delightful, or strange? Living together as family. Thank you. Folks online, you can feel, a, feel free to unmute and speak into the room too. We'd welcome your voices in our space. I'm struck by how this translation says extended over the collar, but, but this image of oil running onto your clothing and having that be a positive thing. <laughs> Oil on your clothing, and that being a positive thing, not a big mess. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? We do have a microphone, too, and I'll make sure we hand that around when, as we're making uh, feedback later. Friends, I think as 21st century people, we might miss some of the context. Uh, that this psalm is rooted in communal living, communal life, a place where people were together a lot. And not just with, perhaps with strangers, but with their kin, with their family, with people that they knew, and friends, even their animals, who might have been considered part of the family and who also lived in the family house too. <laughs> This psalm appears in Psalms of Ascents. It's a grouping of psalms later in the, the book where they're sung, or at least traditionally sung, as people are going to the great feasts, the festivals in Jerusalem. By the way, Lashana Tova it is the last day of Rosh Hashanah, and tonight at, sun, at sundown, uh, that great Jewish festival ends, and we offer that welcome to our Jewish friends and neighbors. I actually noticed, Dr. McCann, uh, one of the people who was part of the translation of the Common English Bible, that the word friends is used, whereas in some other translations, it is kindred or even the kind of gendered sisters and brothers. But that word family in the ancient sense speaks to the people you're closest to, who you're dependent on for your life and for your livelihood. Families joined with other families in this pilgrimage process. And in the psalm is this sense of being together in a shared journey, a shared destination, a shared purpose, a sense of belonging to each other that is distilled into this three verses. And I wondered, as I was thinking about this psalm, could we, could we be family too? Could we be part of the family that the psalm is offering us? As Dr. Uh, as President Krauss, uh, sorry, uh, said last night, those who we are in solidarity with, the ride or die folk in our lives, the folk who we are woven together to, we know as Christians in baptism, but that I need you and you need me. And that is part of what it means to be family or kin in faith. That imagery of the oil running down over the beard is it's ancient in that if you gathered or visited someone in their home, they would wash your feet and they'd anoint your head with oil. And in this case, it's not just a little helping of oil, right? It's enough oil that it flows down over your beard, whether you have one or not. 
you can pretend you have one and just imagine what that's like the refreshing cooling energy of being blessed by that at the end of a hot day and then there's also the dew of mount hermon in a place in the world where there is so little moisture the dew the morning dew is essential i was in sonoma county this past summer and they're having trouble in Sonoma County because the microclimates are changing as climate change is happening. And the dew, which is essential to the grapes growth and ripening is not able to appear because the temperature is too high. And so friends, this extravagance, this imagery is so, so lush. And I think we might miss that uh, looking at it. So I wondered if we could turn to some other poets to help us refresh or to maybe deepen into this. And I've wondered if one of our folks online, I'm looking at Todd, just simply because I know Todd has a great reading voice and is also part of our Wednesday Worship Lab class. Todd, there's a, on the next slide, another translation of Psalm 133, but this one, forgive me, Dr. McCann, is a little less uh, true to the biblical Hebrew and more of a poetic paraphrase by Stephen Mitchell. Let's hear it and see what we notice. How wonderful it is to live in harmony with all people, like stepping out of the bath, your whole body fresh and vibrant like the morning dew glistening on the tiniest blade of grass. It is God's infinite blessing, a taste of eternal life. Whoa, not necessarily what we read in the biblical text, but friends, any words or phrases that just popped out to you, just call them out. Living in harmony, yeah, all people, all people. Yeah, not just your family. Widens that scope a bit, right? What a beautiful way of approaching the, the Psalm with a little bit more looseness in this morning. I want us to actually put ourselves in the context of the Psalm. Late stage pandemic, early fall semester, 2021. Here we are, it is like that phrase in the psalm which opens us up to what metaphor to a description of something that might not be literal but is connected to a, a part of our life or experience and i wonder what images you carry from these last weeks months even the last days of being together with others in person and also online Wonder if you might hear a few more images that have been offered by poets. It is like vistas seen from atop mountains one has climbed, says Nan Merrill in Psalms for Praying, like the stillness of a sunset after a day's work, like a shimmering rainbow breaking through a summer rain. When Pablo Sosa, when Pablo Sosa wrote that opening song that we offer today, Miren que bueno, que bueno es. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. Sing it with me. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. Oh, look and wonder. Oh, look and wonder how good it is. He offered his congregation in Argentina a moment to add their words to the song about what they experienced and how they experienced the extravagance of being in community. And by the way, he then improvised them in the moment into the song. That's a whole other level of liturgical <laughs> improvisation. I, I hope we could get to someday. One was offered by a child who said the joy of being together was like tasting the first ice cream cone of the hot summer, especially in January, the middle of the summer in the Southern Hemisphere. Get that, how good it is. It is like the first ice cream cone on a summer day. What images or ideas come to mind for you as you put your place in the psalmist? Uh, place of the psalmist and write this verse, a verse perhaps, from an experience of your own life. I'm going to give us some time to just reflect. Maybe you want to just write something down or in your phone. Friends, as you think about 
this question, how good it is. It is like what experiences, what words do you offer to add maybe another verse, a fourth, a fifth, or a twelfth verse of the psalm? And if you're on Zoom, you can put those in the chat. If you are on Facebook watching this hours after this service, please put them in the chat too so that we can collect them and see them together. Friends, take a moment and let's see what we come up with. Our lives together have been full of coming backs together. And so I wonder, as you think about images, feelings, or experiences connected to being together, what comes to mind? If you're online and would like to offer yours, please share it, read it aloud, speak it aloud. And if you're in the room and you have one to share, friends, how good it is when all God's people dwell together. It is like It struck me the image that was on the screen there of uh, water being poured over someone and I had the sense on a really hot day putting the head back and having water just wash over the face. Like water washing over my face on a hot day. Thank you, Dr. Leslie. There's that beautiful image by Kyle Ragsdale. Any others? What else is it like? I have another one. Seeing a child in complete glee running through a field. Mm, like a child running through a field in glee. What else have you experienced? Yeah. Right away, I imagined. Um... That moment when you hear a baby laugh for the first time it is like a baby laughing for the first time yeah. others any online it is like oh 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 they're coming here we go it is like peanut butter and jelly with a cold glass of milk yum a <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a gold glass of milk. We bless that. Do you have one, Nathan? Uh, this one um, um, probably is, is significant for people who are uh, uh, neuroatypical. Um, it is never having an awkward moment. Not having an awkward moment. Is that what I heard? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Seeing your baby for the first time, Angela says, it is like a gentle breeze, Todd says, as I sit by a babbling brook in the forest. Are there any others that you carry? It is like, friends, seeing my baby niece for the first time in her sixth month of life. What else do you add to the scripture? invite you to ponder that through the day. You might not have one now, but you might have one later. And would you be willing to share it with someone? Say, I have experienced the joy of being back with others. I've enjoyed or experienced being back in community. I also want to notice that maybe that wasn't a joyful experience too. Maybe that experience was also shrouded by or shadowed by anxiety or by fear as it still may not feel completely safe to be together. And so I wanna honor not just the joy and the positive experiences we share, but also the edges of anxiety and fear that we also hold as we come back into community again.
Let's sing as we go our way. It's good. So good. Can you say that with me? So good. How good is it, friends? It's so good. For fellowship, it's good. Good? So good. For all of us to dwell in unity, not uniformity, in solidarity, to borrow <laughs> President Krauss's words. Let's stand, friends. I'll sing the verses, but I'm going to invite you to sing the refrain with me as we go our way. Listen, good, so good, for fellowship, it's good, try that, good, so good, so good, for fellowship, for fellowship, it's good, now listen again, good, so good, for all of us to dwell in unity. Good, good, so good for all of us, for all of us to dwell in unity. Try the whole refrain. Good, so good, for fellowship it's good. Good, so good for all of us, for all of us to dwell in unity. Behold how good and keep clapping it is for all of us to dwell in unity. Behold how good and pleasant it is for all of us to dwell in unity. Good, good, so good, so good for fellowship. It's good, good, so good for all of us to dwell in unity. Behold how good and pleasant it is for all of us to dwell in unity. Behold how good and pleasant it is of us to dwell in unity. Good, good, so good, so good, for fellowship, it's good, good, so good, for all of us to dwell in unity, for all of us. For all of us to dwell in unity. One last time. For all of us to dwell in unity. Amen. Dr. Grundy, I wonder if you might invite us if there are announcements for the greater community and things we might need to know as we go our way. And let's use the microphone. Let's so we use can that here online. If you are online or if you are here in the room, if there's something going on uh, for the Eden community, uh, we would love to hear about it as we carry this good news that when we dwell in unity, God dwells with us. As we carry that out into the world, are there any announcements for the good of the ministries in which we are engaged? Starting on Mondays, we're going to be having a community soup lunch. Free, anybody can come. You're going to get an email about it today. Um, we're encouraging, we're inviting staff, faculty, and students to come. And if you're interested in preparing a pot of soup, we have some ingredients you can use, or you can get your own ingredients. But we're going to, it's going to be a time after chapel on Mondays for people to gather, have some soup and bread, and be community. Anything else? Things going on. Paul singing? Oh, uh, is there going to be a Wednesday? Oh, yes. When, tonight, I thank you for reminding me. We're having a, a weekly outdoor song circle, 530 to 615, every Wednesday in the quad. 
So that's tonight, uh, Wednesday, 5.30 out in the quad. We're gonna bring some percussion instruments out. We're just gonna sing in community and everyone is welcome. You can share a song, you can just listen, be as close or as far from people as you want to be, but just know that we're gonna sing together. 5.30 in the quad. 5.30 in the quad. Tell your friends. And rally day next week, as Todd says online. Ah, when is that, Todd? You put me on the spot. I think it's next Tuesday afternoon. I'm not looking at my paperwork right now. I'm hearing from Dr. Leslie that it, no, she's not sure. <laughs> it's it's Tuesday. Tuesday. So the answer is go look in bright space. <laughs> It's Tuesday the 14th, but I'm not sure what time. Okay, so next Tuesday is rally day. Chance for us to learn about uh, Eden activities and groups and uh, maybe have some fellowship at the same time. Indeed. Anything else? Uh, next week, I think uh, I will be preaching on Monday and then Dean Williams will be preaching on Tuesday. Uh, so I hope that you will put that in your calendar and come join us for those chapel services as well. Okay. Friends, then, how good is it? So good. How good is it? So good. It is like oil running down Aaron's beard and even down the collars of his robes, like the dew of Hermon, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a cold glass of milk like the sound of a baby's first laughter. Go into this day, I hope, with your imagination nourished for the goodness of what it is to be together in community. Friends, go in peace and go in love. Thanks be to God. Thanks.